You can go ahead and turn over to Titus chapter 2. I just want to comment on that song. Last song we sung, Once I Was Blind and Now I Can See. Do you realize how true that is? I'm telling you, we live in a blind world. Uh, but when you know the Lord, you, you can see. You can understand. We're, we are so blessed in ways beyond what we even comprehend by having this book right here. Having the very Word of God. It answers it all. We may not like what it says and how it answers it, but it answers pretty much every circumstance in this world. Everything we see. It's right here. It, 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 it didn't take God by surprise. We are blessed, seriously. And I remember being in the world and how blind I was, not only as to what it is to be saved. I'm talking about thinking, reasoning. Uh, we are, we are, we're blinded, we're warped before Jesus. And then he, he just lines us out with his truth. I, I, I just praise God for that today. But anyhow, we're in Titus chapter 2. We're looking at verses 3 uh, through 4a and 5b this morning. But it's in the greater context of the entirety of the chapter. So I'm going to go ahead and read these 15 verses because he's dealing with these groups of people and their, their conduct within the body and their, their character, who they are. And so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll tie it together here before we get into it. But I want to read the, the passage. But as for you, speak the things which are fitting for sound doctrine. He's talking to Titus. Paul is. Older men are to be temperate, dignified, sensible, sound in faith, in love, in perseverance. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossips, not enslaved to much wine, teaching what is good so that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sensible, pure, workers at home, kind, being subject to their own husbands so that the word of God will not be dishonored. Likewise, urge the young men to be sensible in all things. Show yourself to be an example of good deeds with purity and doctrine, dignified, sound in speech, which is beyond reproach, so that the opponent will be put to shame having nothing bad to say about us. Urge bond slaves to be subject to their own masters in everything, to be well-pleasing, not argumentative, not pilfering, but showing all good faith so that they will adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in every respect. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus, who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. These things speak and exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one disregard you. That is a powerful, powerful chapter. Last time we were together, what we looked at is we crossed over from doctrine to behavior, to conduct. That's what we, we did. And we, the, the, we started a section, which we're looking at, dealing with instruction on character and conduct for five different groups making up the church body. Five different uh, segments, if you will, that, that are found in any church. That they're, they're the, These age groups. What we're learning is this. Here's your proposition. If you got your outline, you're filling in blank. Sound doctrine must lead to proper conduct in the lives of all groups in the body. All, all people in the body. Everyone in the church body has a place and a purpose 
which requires a conduct in keeping with the truth. The truth must affect us, how we live, how we walk. Sadly, too much of Christianity today can sit and take in the Word of God and never change, even though they know that that's exactly what God is saying to them. This is who I ought to be, but it's not who I'm going to be. I can be that on Sunday, but other than that, I'm not going to do it. Well, I'm going to tell you, that's not a conduct that's in keeping with the truth that saved you. He saved us. There's a basis for the change. We're new creatures in Christ Jesus. We do not have to be who we once were. And the ugly person that made who, me who I was does not have to be a part of that new person. When he rears his ugly head, I can stick a sword through him, which is the Word of God. The truth of God, the, the doctrine of God, the teaching of the Word of God, and I can say no more. That's not who I am. And we're dealing with that now. He told, he told Titus, what I want you to do, he used the word but. Remember, he's drawing a contrast between those false teachers who teach false doctrine. He's saying, but here's what I want from you. You teach what is fitting for sound doctrine. And you know what sound doctrine looks like? Here's what it looks like with older men. And he gave us those, five, those uh, four characteristics. Well, now today we move on. And we're going to look at that. We looked at the older men. This morning we look at the older women who are called upon to manifest four characteristics as well. They're called upon to... to there's four things he mentions about the older women. And, I, and, and this, this is this, the older women group I love. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Uh, it's powerful, their place... In the body, more so than you realize, especially if they embrace it. If they embrace it, they are powerful, powerful personalities. And I don't mean they're in your face and they're, they're, they, they got to be in, in large and in charge. They can, by their very behavior, their very conduct, their graciousness, the, the truth filling them, and by their presence, they, they, are, they are a powerful force in the body of Christ. They truly are. And as we looked at the men play that same role. I want to share a couple, just a couple excerpts from men who, who know the importance of the role of older women in the church. This is E.F. E. Brown. He was a missionary to India, and he writes regarding the absence of older women. Older women play a very important part in the church and society. How large a part one does not realize till one witnesses a social life from which they are almost absent. Kindly grandmothers and sweet, charitable older women are the natural admirers of the young. I love that line. Because it's so true. They, they, they're, the, they're the natural admirers of the young. The older women to whom years have brought serenity and sympathy and understanding have a part to play in the life of the church and of the community, which is peculiarly their own. Uh, it belongs to them. They've made it their own community. Wearsby, Warren Wearsby, who most of you know, he wrote the whole commentary series, the B series, uh, a great radio personality for years and years and years. He said this, one of the strongest forces for spiritual maturity in the local church had, uh, lies, excuse me, lies with the older believers. In my own ministry, I have been greatly helped by senior saints who know how to pray, teach the word, troubleshoot, and help build the church. Older saints, women who realize their place and purpose are essential to the health of the body. And I, I say amen uh, to that. Now, Let's just jump right in. Let's look at the first characteristic. 
that, that we're told that older women are to manifest. First, they are to be reverent in behavior. They're to be reverent in their behavior. This portion opens with likewise. If you look at what's there, uh, it, it says after we got past the, the, the men and you come into the older women, he says, older women, likewise. Now, what does he mean? This likewise can be taken one of two ways. It can be like uh, everything that is expected of the uh, older men, the older gentlemen in your church, Likewise, ought to be manifested with the women plus the plus more. Okay, plus whatever he's going to add here. However, the term here seems to be more transitional because he's dealing with various groups. And he says, okay, let's start with the men. Likewise, I want to talk to the to the older women. And that seems to be more the case. But any positive, I'm just going to say this, anything God wants in any other person. That's a, that is a positive, glorifying characteristic for, for, for himself. It, we should desire it. We should pursue it. We should cultivate that in our lives. We should want that to come about. But it does seem to be this likewise is transitional as he moves from the elder men now to the elder women. The first thing he tells them is there to be reverent in uh, behavior. What are we talking about? Well, we're talking about uh, deportment that, that reflects holiness. They carry themselves in a holy manner. It speaks of being a Christian woman. That's just how they walk the earth. That, that's who they are. And the way they walk, the way they carry themselves, their deportment, how they are, cries out, they're a child of God. They've got years of walking with the Lord. They're ho- they're, there's a holiness about them. The way they carry themselves. It's a behavioral thing. It is truth on display. Just what we're talking about. We're talking about the years of being in the Lord have changed them for the glory of the Lord. And you can see it on them. It's there. They carry it on themselves. It's become who they are. Now, we're not talking about a momentary or a circumstantial occurrence of holiness. There are too many plastic halo Christians. I'm telling you that. And what did you say? Well, what do you mean plastic halo Christian? You know what I mean. I'm talking you put it on on Sunday morning and when you go to the church group on midweek or whatever, I'm Joe Christian. I'm the sweetest thing ever. But when I get home in the, in, in the woman's side of it or the man's side of it, next thing I, I uh, the woman's on the phone talking to her friend about Millie and her issues and ripping her to shreds. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about there's no ripping anybody to shreds because that's just not what they do. They're godly. There's a holiness about them. And that's what we're talking about, this reverent in behavior. that They don't do that. It is an overall carriage of holiness. Behavior befitting a holy per, uh, person. And it speaks of a regard for life as sacred. They see their time as precious. They make the most of it. And, the, and the, the most you make of your life is by living in such a way that you glorify God in your dealings with people. Uh, and, 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 your, and the Lord. You, you're out here, you're living for Him, and that's what these, these senior women are called upon to manifest. I'm going to name a lady who I, in my life, I'm just saying, I've got a bunch of them. I've got a bunch of, of Christian women that I would put in this circle. But there's one who, who just, uh, she, she's always been up there, she's with the Lord already. And some of you would say amen to it. And it was a lady who walked amongst in my life for probably uh, 28 years. And there wasn't ever one time I saw her personally. Now, maybe some of you have seen her that way, but there has never been a time that I personally ever, in all that time, as a lay person in the church and as a pastor of the church, never once have I seen her where I did not see her reverent 
in her behavior. In the context of the church setting, in her home, and in the public setting, always the same. And that was Viola Martin. That woman was this characteristic. It was all over her. She was that kind of a lady. You just you didn't see her in any way other than just that. That's who she was. She, she, that's just the way she was. Always. And there are others. And I'm not going to start naming the ones that are alive because then the other ones that are alive, well, why not me, Pastor? And then i got to explain it. Well, you fail over here really miserably. No, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. But I'm not going to put myself in that spot. But I'm going to tell you there are several ladies in our church that are alive that manifest this reverent behavior. They have it. They have it. My mother had it. My mother had it. She was just, she had, she, you got the same lady every time. That's who you got. It, there, was a, there was just a, uh, and I don't want to, because today's, cold, I, I'm going to say it, there was a sweetness. There was a graciousness. A lot of women don't want to be called sweet today. They don't like that. Don't call me sweet. <laughs> well, what do you want me to call you? But anyhow, there's that quality of understanding life. And, how, and, and it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful moment. It's sacred to me. I'm going to live it and it's going to, I'm going to live it for good. That's what we're talking about. Reverent in behavior. Characteristic number two. May diabolos. No devil. No devil. That's what this one is. And the, what, what, what's translated, they're not to be gossips. But the language is may diab- diablos, diablos, bolas. Yeah, okay. No devils. You, di- uh, you get the diablos. But anyway, what, what it, in this context, it, it, when you put it in this context, it means no slanderers. Now, here's, here's the idea, though. You, I want you to get this. We're not talking just about carrying tales, which we all know that's even wrong. And it is. It is. But what's in view here goes like a step further. What we're dealing with is being malicious in it. Being hateful and hurtful in it. It's, the, it's one thing to call and pass on information. <laughs> I, did you hear about Mary? You, you know what's going on. Then it's, did you hear about Mary? She is a snake. She's in this mess because that's being a malicious, hateful. It's taking it a step further. All gossip is wrong. I mean, it's not, it's not right. Uh, they shouldn't gossip at all, no matter what. But this goes a step further into an ugly place where you're out to harm and you're being hurtful. Those usually considered most in danger, this was an observation that one commentator made about this group of women, those usually considered most in danger of falling into it because of their positive inclination are hereby warned. Now I want you to hear that again. He's speaking about the older women and he's saying that they are considered most in danger of falling into a gossip situation, a hurtful gossip situation. But I like what he says. It's not because they're, they're lousy in their character. It's because of their positive inclination toward caring. That they hear this stuff and they care about it. And Satan can get in and take what is a positive quality for the elderly women who are compassionate, caring about various circumstances in people's lives, but he twists it and then it can become ugly. And so they're warned not to go there. 
Don't go to this place. Gossip is never good for men or women. And by the way, I believe men gossip every bit as much as women do. Women get a bad rap in that circle, but I know a lot of men who are hard-nosed gossips. Straight up, rip you to pieces, the whole nine yards. It's no good anywhere it surfaces. But women, the older women, it's put in their character character uh, that where God wants them to manifest certain characteristics and not manifest others. It's put there because of who they are. They're prone to pick up on this stuff more so than a lot of other people because that's who God's made them to be, caring. Years have caused them to care. It's what you do with it that becomes the danger. Don't let it turn into a devil in your life to where it's destructive. It's, it's not positive. It's not glorifying God. It's not keeping with who you are, being reverent, In behavior. That's not reverent behavior. One cannot be reverent in their behavior and be a gossip. You can't. And gossip is hurtful. And in little churches, big churches, bigger churches you might get by with hiding it a lot longer. Little churches, it rips them to pieces. Because it gets around real quick. And you find out this person said that, and then that person tells this person, and that person tells that one. Next thing you got civil war, and the pastor's running up a white flag. <laughs> it's like I, 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 I retreat, I give up, because you can't get it, you can't cut it off unless you see it for what it is and call it what it is, and just say, This is from the devil, and I and seek forgiveness, get right with God, and be done with it. Don't keep playing with it. Don't put a band-aid on it. Call it what it is and cut it out of your life and then move on. And I'm going to tell you, if somebody came to me and said, Pastor, I was gossiping against you and and the Lord convicted my heart of this and I'm so sorry I said this. I'm I'm afraid you will get wind of this and I I, I, I ask you to forgive me. And you know what I'd do? I'd say, get out. No, I'd say, I forgive you. I would forgive you. Who's not going to forgive somebody who comes to him and seeks forgiveness? Really seeking it. That's what we need to do with each other. But these older women, they're told, no devils. Don't let it become slanderous. Don't let the good thing in you that makes you special, that you care, and that there's this... This compassion in your life. Don't let that be played upon by the evil one to twist it, corrupt it, and turn you into a malicious gossip. Don't let that happen. Guard against it. That's not behavior that's befitting sound doctrine. Third characteristic. They are not to be alcoholics or enslaved To much wine. Now, I don't know very many older women are alcoholics. I've not met them. But I will say this. The elder women, uh, like the men, can be led away by their appetites. Wine in their culture, wine in that culture was a staple they had it for pretty much for every meal. I don't know about breakfast. Maybe, they, I don't know. But I know they drank wine. And I'm not talking Welsh's grape juice. And a lot of people want to make the case that the Lord, you know, the, the, the new wine he made was grape juice. And this wine, you know, da, da, da. all I can tell you is they accused Jesus of being a drunkard. And sitting with drunks and drinking with them. It wasn't because they were drinking Welsh's grape juice. The problem here in this case is he's saying that the older women should not be given to vice. They shouldn't be given to vice. And in this culture, a real danger was to wine. During the day to drink wine and become enslaved to wine. The, The one thing I want you to get in note here 
is the, the idea that you can become enslaved to it. Not malicious gossip, nor enslaved. Do you understand? With the abuse of alcohol, but any kind of other drug, any of those things that, that change your, your mood or whatever, any of those kind of things that, that physically uh, you take into your body, chains can come with those. And the elder women should be at a place where they understand those things and they don't allow themselves to get there, to get to that place. These chains that go with this enslavement to vice should not adorn the elderly woman if she's living her life befitting sound doctrine. She should be free of those kind of things. Fourth characteristic, final characteristics. And this is a good one. It's very good. And I wish more of our older ladies would just grab hold of this and in a loving way do what, what's being asked of here. And that is, is they need to be teachers of what is good. Teachers of what is good. I want to say this in, in the defense of the elderly women, just like I said of the elderly men. They're, they're treasures, but you got to tap them. You have to understand they are where they are because they put the time in. I don't know if you look across the room and you see an older person, and maybe, maybe you've been in and out of a church multiple times, but that personality has been there for 35, 40 years. 50 years. How do you look at that person? What do you see when you see that person? It ought to, it ought to inspire and humble at the same time. Don't look past that. Understand that they've been loving Jesus for 40 years. Through these experiences and these experiences. And these experiences, and they continued. They didn't go in and out of the of, all over the place. They just kept the course, kept loving Jesus. They're, they're treasures. I'm serious. You gotta go, you, you need to talk to them. You need to say, if you're a young woman and you're having trouble with this situation or that situation, you ought to, you ought to seek out. An elderly woman that you respect spiritually and say, how have you done it? How have you done this for this long? Let them teach you. Let them be what they're supposed to be in your life. We're bullheaded. Man, if, if you... Well, <laughs> I'm not going to say it. I was going to say, if you'd listen to me... I could save you from a lot of detours and a lot of, a lot of crashes along the way. And there are a lot of people in our church who could do the same thing. And a lot of them got gray hair and they're older because they've already done it. They've done it. They know what it is to have a, a husband who's selfish or a husband who's lazy or a husband who's clingy. Or, or uh, whatever the situation, I'm just doing negative now. They also know what it is to have a godly husband who loves the Lord. How, how to be a helpmate and a partner to that person. They know how to do that. They've been there. They've done it. Ask them. Talk to them about it. They're, they're, the part of their responsibility is to be teachers. And the, who are they to teach? They're to teach what, the, what the, the content is, what is good. And they're to teach the younger women about their duties. Who they're supposed to be. I love this. How do they do this though? How do you teach that? And I'm going to tell you, they do it one of two ways. One is by their their the very first point we looked at there on older women, they do it by their reverent behavior, just by their presence, by watching them, they teach you. 
Watch them how they relate to their husbands. Watch them how they relate to their children. Watch them how they relate to their grandchildren. I never seen, I never watched Viola or never saw Viola ever once yell at her husband. Never. Never heard, to be honest with you, I never even heard her raise her voice. I've seen her eyebrows go up. I've seen her give the look like, okay, but I've never, I never saw her lash out to Dave. Have you, did you, have you ever rusty? Never, never. All the years that we had by, never have I seen that. All I ever saw from by is she loved her husband. She came alongside of her husband. She was, she was, she was, she taught by how she was. And so do our ladies here. That's how they teach. Watch them. Watch who they are. You know who they are. You know what they do to your heart. The the graciousness that exudes from some of our ladies. That's God in them. That God's, God's chiseled and made them this person for, for our body. For our fellowship. But he gave them to the younger women. I love that. He gave them to the younger women. To teach them. Teaching is the call. That there's that their responsibility. And so for you older, older ladies. You should look. And don't be jumping in everybody's face. Because you've got to have that reverent behavior. It's all part of the package. But you should be looking for opportunities. To help out the younger gals. I've seen it in, in women in our church very, several different times where younger women have come in and they didn't really, hadn't been walking with the Lord very long at all. They didn't really understand modesty. Just an example. What it was to be modest in their apparel. Wearing things that really were, were not the best choice. And I've seen older women pull them aside and say, listen, honey, you got to get a better top. <laughs> you need to understand and explain it. Show them. Tell them. Why? It's helping them. Helping them in their walk with the Lord. Helping them to understand the dynamic of what it is to be part of a body made up of men and women and boys and girls and what that should look like. You help them. You teach them. That's just one example. It goes into the relationships and he's going to list them when we get to the younger women. But the reality is, is there's that's their responsibility. But I want you to understand this uniquely, the older women, not the pastor. Nor the elders are called upon to teach the younger women. It's the older women who are called upon to teach the younger women these things. I think that's really neat. I, I, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a woman. I don't choose to be a woman today either, but I'm not a woman. I know what I am. I know what I am. And I'm going to tell you, there are some persons that are more equipped, more capable, far more understanding, have lived it, who know how to enter that situation and address it. Rightly and with an understanding that I cannot get to because I am not that. And God says, You older women, you do this. Do this. Teach the younger women. Show them what it is to be a Christian woman, what it looks like in all these contexts. Teach what is good. What do we mean by good? What's befitting sound doctrine? What's befitting the truth of God's word. What does the word look like in your life as it relates to your husband, to your children, to your home? That's what he says. That's what we're looking at. So I, I really love that it, it falls to them and not that I want out of it. But the reality is, is that they're, they're equipped for it. They've lived the life. I want to drive home the importance of the group in the body. You're called to this uh, character. These four characteristics are to be manifested. This con- uh, you're called to this 
conduct for a purpose. Look at 4, verse 4, A, so that they may encourage, so that they may encourage young women. So what, what, is, what is your purpose in doing this, in being this way? It puts you in a place so you can teach, so that you can have an impact in the body. A great impact in the body as it relates to the younger women and their growth and their maturity in Christ. The older women should have a vital part in that. 5b, we're told this. If you look at the last part of this, so that the word of God will not be dishonored. Now this ties right back into the older women are to teach the younger women. Why? So that the so that the word of God will not be dishonored. Now this is this is pretty strong. Linsky said this: If the women fail in what Paul asked here, the fear is the word of God will be blasphemed. So I'm blaming you if a young. <laughs> no. But the idea is is that the older women, the senior women, are directly uh, tied to the conduct of the younger women and shaping it in a way that they'll walk in their life in such a way that they won't dishonor the the Lord or His Word, the truth. The truth. So it's a powerful role that the the older women play. It starts with them as it relates to uh, the younger women. We'll look at the, the younger women coming up. But I want you to understand, and I repeat this, because this is an important truth for all of us, because what we're dealing with is these five groups. And what we should be getting here, it's very powerful, and that is, is every one of us, every one of us in the body have a place and we have a purpose in the body. But it requires a conduct in keeping with the truth. The role you have in your whatever age group you find yourself, senior man, senior woman, at this point, those are the two we've looked at. It's in keeping with the truth that you embraced. You trusted Christ. He saved you from who you were. From what the world says you you, you, you should be or where it would take you. Your, your behavior should speak of a totally different person than that. It's a, it's a behavior that's in keeping with the truth. And my function in the body is directly connected to my yieldedness to that truth. A gracious, loving, godly, reverent, and behavior woman is impactful in the body. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Fill this church up with them. I'll take them all. I will. (laughs) Because they're wonderful. But they can be ugly if they don't keep in mind my behavior is in keeping with that truth that I embraced. Same way with the guys, but we all have a place and we all have a purpose. And I just hope we can find it and start really functioning that way with each other. Because it's just going to make us beautiful. It's going to make us strong. And it's going to put us in a place where we're good for, we're, we're prepared for good deeds. But we're going to glorify our Lord who saved us. And that's what we want. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for the opportunity to be out again today and sit under your word. Thank you for this little letter of Titus and how powerful it is to the church. I thank you for the older women in our church, every one of them, Lord. That, that are seniors and their hearts for you. I thank you for their perseverance in, in, in their Christianity, in their marriages, in their love for their children and rearing their children for you, their grandchildren. Lord, the impact they desire to have for your glory, I, 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 I just praise you for that. And for the impact that they do have for your glory, I praise you for that. I thank you for the treasures that they are. I pray that our younger women would realize that they are are 
Truly that, they are a treasure to be tapped upon, to be drawn from, to learn from. And that, it, that as they do so, that it would help them to become who you desire them to be as well in this body. Lord, we thank you for loving us today. I thank you for fellowship and any that we might enjoy as we leave here, Lord. I pray you'd be in that as well. Uh, with the kids club kicking off tonight, I, I pray you'd be with each of the leaders, encourage them, just give them that energy as they meet with the young people, that they'd be fired up and the kids would just have a great time. And I pray that our club's uh, numbers with the children and the teens would grow this year, Lord, that we'd see new faces coming in and our young people have a desire to see their peers uh, coming to the saving knowledge of Christ or, or coming into a place where they can be taught in truth as well. But just bless the week out ahead of us. Help us to count for you, Lord. We just ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.